article. I flow real quick. My uh, uh, thing. Um, uh, Psalms. Psalms 55. Uh, yeah. yeah, there it goes. Psalms 55 and 21. It says, um, the words of his mouth. Uh, start at 20. He that he hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him he had broken his covenant which so-called white man broken broken most all of his covenants he made with anybody he says the words of his the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart he his hands his like his words were softer than oil yet were they drawn swords so the so-called white man whose blessing is a sword so the so-called white man Esau, he uses his blessing to his advantage. So, uh, you know, so-called white man is doing his job, using um his his bless his uh portion of blessing to his uh uh uh, uh advantage, you know, he's optimizing his his <laughs> his blessing so to speak on planet Earth since since you know since a hey, Alexander the Greek, you see. It says it's not gonna be too long. It says uh, sciencehistory.org dot org dis distill dis distillations brief history of chemical war for uh, for more than two thousand years um, years human in 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 unity has turned has turned that and has turn natural and synthetic poisons into into weapons of war uh, know your world war one chemical weapons three substances were responsible for mo most chemical weapons and injury injuries and deaths during world war one chlorine phos phosgene and mustard gas chlorine gas Used on the infamous day of April twenty second, nineteen fifteen, produces a green, greenish yellow cloud that smells of bleach, and immediately irritates the eyes, nose, lungs, and throat of those exposed to it. At high enough, does it kills by asphyxiation? Phosgene, which which smells like moldy hay. Is also an irritant, but six times more deadly than chlorine gas. Phosgene is also much stealthy, stealthier weapon. It's it's colorless, and soldiers did not at first know that they had received a fat dose. After a day or two, victims' lungs will fill will fill with with fluid, and they will slowly suffocate in agonizing death. Although the Germans were the first to use phosgene on the battlefield, it became the primary chemi primary chemical weapon at, of the Allies. Phosgene was responsible for 85% of chemical weapons fatalities during World War One. Uh, mustard gas, a potential blistering agent, was dubbed king of the battle gases like phosgene, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Its effects are not immediate. It has potent. Sm it has a potent smell. Some say it reeks of garlic, gasoline, rubber, or dead horses. Hours after exposure of, of vitamin of victims, like eyes become bloodshot, begin to water, and become increasingly painful. With some victims suffering temporary blindness, worse skin begins to blister, partic particularly in most areas such as the armpits and genitals. As the blisters pop, they often become infected. Mustard gas could, could also contaminate, contaminate land, 
where it had been deployed, exposure sensitized victims further expo exposure, even at lower lower doses, produced symptoms mustard gas as caused the the highest number of casualties from chemical weapons, upward of uh, one hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, by some estimates, but it caused few direct death, direct deaths because the the open air of the battlefield kept concentrations below the lethal threshold. Let me read a little bit more of this. Uh, I wonder if they got. Yeah, I'll read a few of the, the early ones, and I'll read a few of the um, later ones. It says, 600 BCE, the Athenian military tyrants. Hmm. Oh, I started 1675. France and Germany signed the Strasbourg Agreement, the first international agreement to be to ban chemical weapons in this case outlawing the use of poison bullets 1845 during the french con conquest of algeria french troops before more than and maybe that's where algeria uh, alger Vizira, i believe come from i'm not sure french troops forced more more than a thousand members of a Berger tribe into a cave and then used smoke to kill them. 1861 through 1865. During the American Civil War, civil, civilians and soldiers on both sides proposed using chemical weapons among a multitude of unreal, unrealized ideas. New York City school teacher John Doughty recommends firing chlorine gas projectiles at confederate troops and confederate soldiers Ishan Sean Walker suggests dropping canisters of poison gas from balloons a series of international treaties signed by most western nations banned the use of poison and poison poison and poisonous weapons in war And it talks about, then it goes into 1914. What's up in the next sequence? And then, yeah, so I'm going to read this, which we all know, you know. 1943, the Nazi forced prisoners at the Die, Die Hernforth concentration camp to produce Taubon. Laborers are often deny medical treatment when exposed to lethal doses of the poison so you know about the whole holocaust uh uh, uh when uh, adolf hitler how that went down you know how what was the real truth of it so i don't believe too much of that um read these last three during the iran iran iraq war Iraq uses chemical weapons, including Taliban, against Iran and Iraq's Kurdish uh, minority. United Nations experts confirm Iraq's use of chemical weapons, but there, there is little international outcry. Iran in, initiates its own chemical weapons program in retaliation. 1993. The Chemical Weapons Con Convention is signed. Beginning in 1997, the Disarmament Agreement bans the development, production, stockpiling, and use of chemical weapons. Uh, in 2013, the Syrian military uses uh, siren gas against uh, civilians during the Syrian Civil War. Hundreds are killed, uh, uh, allegedly Allegedly, Bashar al-Assad's government relinquishes its arsenal of chemical weapons after threats of U.S. airstrikes. So, really, the United States did that to, to them there. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, when 
I seen how I seen how the, you know kid the children and things like that were affected by that gas man that was crazy let's see let me get Habakkuk 2 and 5 yeah also because he transgresses by wine he is a proud man neither keepeth at home who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death and cannot be satisfied but generation and gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people so hey read verse 6 shall not all these take up a parable against him in a taunting proverb against him and say woe to him that increases increaseth that which is not his how long and to him that laded himself with thick clay so he is a problem and neither keepeth at home because he's all in these different nations and nations land for whatever his purpose is, his his ill intent. Um, you know, so he can't keep himself at, at um at home. You see, he desires he desires place his his home is hell. So he, he wants everything to himself. A greedy a greedy bastard. <laughs> Excuse my French, but you know, you know, and he increase of what is not his because he wants the main thing. He'll, apparently, allegedly, the soldiers are being taken out of Syria. Uh, uh, Donald Trump is ordering the soldiers to leave Syria, but who knows what's gonna happen? But they're 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 in that they uh, that land to to run all types of different uh, pipe uh, pipe program of uh, pipelines you know steal resources and overthrow uh governments so that's what the so-called white men he, they have 10 they have 10 20 30 50 40 50 year plans of overthrowing governments and, and, and basically trying to take over the middle east and everywhere because uh you know america's not enough you see uh, north america is not enough for so-called white men so 